Welcome back to Bon Voyage Cruise Travel. Today marks the beginning of an extraordinary journey aboard the Icon of the Seas, Royal Caribbean's latest marvel and the current title holder of the world's largest cruise ship. As someone who's navigated the seas on almost 40 voyages, I've seen my share of ships, but there has been nothing quite like this. Embarkation day can often set the tone for your cruise. And you might wonder, the ship this size, is it a seamless start or crowded chaos? I'm here to take you through my first day from a smooth and surprisingly swift embarkation to exploring what this floating giant has to offer. And let me tell you, it's far from the zoo you might expect. So join me as I uncover the record-breaking features, the seamless flow of life on board, and how to make the most of your cruise on this incredible ship. See how the icon of the seas stands out from the crowd. Let's get started. So we're gonna take the shuttle from the airport. They run every hour on the hour. I thought that would be the easiest way to do this. Royal Caribbean makes it really easy to check in and you need to do so on your app. And that goes for the entertainment as well. Unlike other venues or other ships where you can just walk on and go to any show, this you have to actually specify the day you're wanting because each show is shown three times during the seven days that you're doing this. So, because unfortunately there's just not enough space for everyone and so you have to kind of make your choice of what you want to do. It's changeable, it's flexible. So they've, they've updated their app, it looks a little different. And so you would go to entertainment, it shows you all the things. It has Absolute Zero, Aqua Theater, Comedy Club, The Wizard of Oz, which is a Broadway type show. And I have that tonight, so I'm excited about that. And that's what I like about this ship, is there is so much to do. If it's anything like The Wonder, there's so much choice of music and different activities to do with those shows themselves, it's really a good idea to reserve. So that's all I wanted to say about that. So as far as your embarkation day process, you can always double check your reservations with someone on board. So let's hope it's, it, it um, interfaces well. Wow. I can't wait to explore it. We waited about an hour at the airport. We took the ride. It was about a 15 minute ride with the uh, Royal Caribbean bus. My check-in time is supposed to be at two, but it is not, it is like one and I'm, and they're allowing us on. So and I know I'm not saying break the rules, but if you happen to end up there early, it's probably going to be just fine. It looks like that. There's embarkation and security. There's some lines, but it's really not that bad. It seems to be very managed very nicely. When you're checking in, all you need is your CPAS card. And I downloaded it to my wallet on my phone. You show this and your passport. And then if you've taken a picture before you've come, which they added to security photo, that's all they need. You stop and you just go through security now. And it's that easy. It, was, it took about four minutes. Wow. Yeah, beautiful. My goodness. Wow. Oh, this is the uh, Royal Promenade area. My goodness, it's so huge. And there's the balloons for the party tonight. Wow, this is really pretty. Wow, what, it is very impressive. There's just natural light. For the Royal Promenade, it's twice the width. It feels like a, a hotel almost. It's beautiful. So I can't wait to check out the rest of the ship. Let's go. So we're trying to find our muster station. Right after boarding, the first thing you want to do is check your app for your muster station location. Mine was conveniently located at the gym on deck five and accessible via the track. 
The whole process is quick, taking about five minutes for a safety and life vest briefing. And once your name is ticked off the list, you're all set to explore the ship. I mean, our mustard drill talk happened to be in the gym. So this is just a sneak peek of this for my embarkation day. I'll go more into this later, but it's really nice. It's very beautiful um, setup. They have BOSU balls, lots of free weights. They have weighted balls. I mean, it's a really nice gym. People are liking it here. They have rowing machines, treadmills. Well, it's huge, and I like the natural light. It's not stuck in the barrels of the ship. Lockers are here, so I'm wondering if the sauna that I usually can do is not here. It's probably not. It's like a yoga room or something. Very pretty. More weights. This is a whole different section. A body sculpt boot camp. As you know, the journey to your muster station and beyond can be an adventure in itself. Let's take a quick detour to discover some of the ship's highlights. The icon of the seas is a testament to what modern cruising can be, and somehow it all works. Vast yet inviting. As I made my way through the ship, I stumbled upon the Chill Island area. Lots going on here, lots of music and people having fun. And the El Loco Fresh, the complimentary restaurant, it serves up some great Mexican food and it's perfect for a quick snack. Since I'm in the vicinity of the aft of Deck 15, I'm checking out the buffet. This is kind of an idea of what it looks like. So there's booth seating here, and there's regular seating. Some, it's all very natural, light, clean, some colors of blue and beige. It's not set up at the moment, on this side anyway. I'll show a more in-depth look, but I was going to come in here for something to drink. But our dinner is so early, it's at 5 o'clock, I think I'm not even going to eat anything at the moment. It's very nice. So this is, they have a whole other side to the right that's identical. And after this brief exploration, I'm ready to head to the stateroom. The elevators are kind of interesting because you select your deck and then it tells you what elevator to go to, like either A or B or whichever. So you don't touch buttons in the elevator, it's done right here. A beautiful ship so far and I'm gonna go check out what my room looks like now. Finding your stateroom is really easy. The number is right on your CPAS card that's in the app. And once you're in your room, you can get your physical CPAS card at the door and that acts as your room key. I always check the dining room number listed on it and then I go to the dining room to check out the location and see if it's to my liking. This is such a nice room. So it is the very forward facing. Sometimes you'll see sweet balconies or or just big picture windows. I know on the Ovation of the Seas, I had something similar to this and they had two chairs and it was just so nice and spacious and this seems to be that way as well. So this is considered a um, deluxe ocean view. 9506 is the room. This is a perspective from the window. So you see the, the length of the room. So the bathroom is really unusual because are the uh, little shelves they have here. So that's different. It's a glass shower. The hook is like this. The door, it opens up on a hinge. So it opens pretty wide. It looks so brand new, everything in here. I wonder how many people, maybe three people have stayed in here. While it's easy to get sidetracked with so much to see and do, these steps really ensure you're prepared and ready to enjoy everything that the Icon of the Seas has to offer. Destination is the Pearl Cafe for a bite to eat and then check out the sights along the way, eventually making my way to the dining room. So there's a top level to this area. Karaoke. 
So the Boleros Bar is generally a really small little place for Latin dancing. But this would be a fun place to go to at night. And then there's next cruise over there, point and feather and something new. So the cafe promenade that used to be down on the Royal Promenade area, this is now up here on 6. And it's like a venue that's, it's so nice to have the natural light. It's all included in your cost. This is the where you can sit and eat and look out. It's picture ceiling windows. And they have, oh wow, look at all this food here. That looks delicious. A birria sandwich. Yeah. So this is all free of charge? That one is free. Yeah. The whole thing? The whole thing is free. Wow, nice. So there you go. So something different in the Pearl Cafe. And I like this little uh, thing. The road to success is paved in coffee. I'll, I agree, I'm going to get some right now. So one of the things that I really enjoy is booking the shows. And so like I said, you should book them on your app so you can make sure that you get what you're wanting. But if things are full, like the Aqua Show is full. So there's a place on deck six, the box office. And if you go there, they can have people that will look up what is available and when. So I happened to uh, find an open show that maybe somebody canceled out of and it was at 1030 on one of the days. But what they'll do is they'll give you a um, little form like this. And, but it will have like all the things you booked. So you, I mean, you, you can still have it on your app and look it up, but this way you've got a visual, like the whole week visual, and you can see, you can change this to do whatever. Like there's the Wizard of Oz, the Signature Artist Showtime, the Starburst Elemental Beauty, and then Aqua Action. So those are the shows that rotate. There also is an adult comedy live, but I'm just really not into that. So just what I'm saying is that if some things are booked, you can always recheck with the, the box office for the certain times and they will accommodate you. Very friendly, helpful people. I, what I've noticed is there's so many people standing around with, can I help you? And, or ask me, these pink vests, and they're so happy and friendly. And, you know, I, I, I appreciate that. So it's, a, it's, it's kind of like you feel the energy of a new ship. Even though it's probably, what, a month old, it still feels that way. Everything looks really good in great shape, and, and I like the food, it's a little different. So, just so you know, there's an, an actual real Starbucks downstairs on deck five in the Royal Promenade. That is your traditional Starbucks where you buy your drinks. If you have some, if you buy a coffee card, that particular thing you redeem up here at the Pearl Cafe, or in some other places around the ship but it wouldn't be at the Starbucks itself. Even though they do use Starbucks cups here and the coffee is, is good, it's a, an Italian espresso. The coffee card looks like this and it's $31 for 15 coffees. So it's actually a pretty good deal. And you can buy this in advance. You know, Princess used to do that and I used to buy that, but then they stopped doing that. And it was just, you have to pay as you go, but it was still reasonable. I enjoy having nice, you know, a nice cup of coffee with some of these desserts they have in the showcase. It looks great. So this, and it also, if you are a Diamond member, you are given four coupons, four vouchers a day, and that can go for drinks um, up to, I think, $12 a drink, $12 or $15, I can't remember. And you can also use that for coffee. So that's what I use mine for because I don't drink. So the coffee. I enjoy this every every day, a couple times a day, and it's it doesn't cost me anything because I'm a diamond member. Headed to the dining room to see what we can do with our reservation. So you always want to make sure you check your table to make sure it's to your satisfaction because um, if you let it go too long, things might be too gelled and you won't be able to change it. And as I noticed when I walked in here, there wasn't anybody at the, the desk to even talk to. I, they may be on a different floor. I'm on deck five right now. It could have been four or three, it looks like. But just so you know, you always want to talk to someone about your reservations if you're not satisfied with it. And I've done this so much that now a huge part of my last trip, when I did um, 
brilliance of the season. A huge part of my trip was trying to find the right table for me. This is the dining room. Eight, two, three. Okay, good. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, nice Thanks so much. I, I, yeah. So, hallelujah. I finally got my table right. I am happy with this. This is perfectly fine. I know it's not window, but it's a table for two. And there is someone here, but it's not that close. And then this is the way the rest of the room looks like. I know actually it's three levels. So it looks like larger parties there, here, and there. Nice decor. If I'm noticing the windows, there really aren't a lot of windows. There's tables for four by the windows, but the, there, there's lifeboats in front of them. So it makes it a little dark. Maybe down on the lower levels, it's different. It seems like the larger groups are at the window. And then they have this whole open uh, area here too. It's um, pretty artwork in burgundy and gold. It's supposed to be the captain's table, but I'll give you a better look from this perspective. You can see all the different tables here. But again, the windows over there are blocked by um, lifeboats. So it's a bit obstructed. What does the spa look like on Icon of the Seas? Let's check it out. Mimosas and juices. The standard price for the juices are $8.25. Mimosas are $12. Oh, wow. <laughs> IV energy infusions. One thing I have to say, this ship is so spread out that I went to a sail away party at 445 and then tried to do the spa raffle at 5 and then my dinner is at 5 so I came running to here but they're both on opposite sides of the ship after forward. It's so confusing and the elevators you have to specify where you're going and you have to catch the middle elevator or the forward of the app. Um, I haven't got this down yet. I'm working on it. It is very uh, time consuming to walk. We didn't get our luggage yet, so I'm pretty much dining in what I wore on the plane. I normally would dress nicer than this, but it's pretty casual and I never have had a five o'clock dinner. But they have three seatings, five, 6.45 and 8.30. board menu. Our waiter is Brandy and our assistant waiter is Benito and we are at table 823. So this is the dining room at five o'clock. Probably all at the sail away or they're at the spa raffle. Downstairs it's getting a little busier. I think my time dining starts I think he said 630. Crab cakes. It's really nice that the uh, head waitress came up to us and Wanted to know if we liked our table, how everything was. She gave me her business card here and just wanted me to check in if I didn't like anything. And the waiter was, was saying if I didn't like anything to just please tell him and he'd get me something else. So they're very accommodating. Honestly, for a ship just being on the seas for three weeks, I, I feel like they have it down. I think they have the best of the best of the workers. And so that's refreshing. Portobello mushroom. Boston green pie. Key lime pie. My favorite.
Check out this jazz club on an orchestra night. Yes, it's big, and yes, you'll need some stamina, but the experiences awaiting you are really like no other. And if you have found this helpful, informative, or you've learned something, please give this a thumbs up and consider subscribing. For more helpful tips, check out my playlist on the Icon of the Seas that talks about ports, dining, activities, entertainment, and what you can expect. It's been my pleasure showing you around the Icon of the Seas. It's quite a ship. Thank you so much for watching and until next time.